where they know, they feel that it's their own. Mm -hmm. They know that they're talking to their own. They know that they are valued and they are welcome. Mm. And that the people who attend, the visitors want to hear their voices, mm. you know? Mm. And I think it's very much the same for a lot of the festivals um, across the continent. Mm. When you talk about the festival in Botswana, it's the same sort of feeling. Mm. We need, not because we're trying to project anything to the outside world. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in projecting things to my fellow Africans. Mm. They are my focus. They are the people that I'm interested in. You know, I, I really like that last part. It's something which I am beginning to get a stronger and stronger realization of. Um, especially when we look at the demographics. I mean, Africa has the youngest uh, population. And so this is where the action is at, really. And for, for us to now really come into our own, it, it, it is it's something that means that we are not letting any opportunity slip. But we've heard about maybe the thinking behind the founding of uh, Ake. But you, before you did the, I mean, you started that festival. You were doing many other things in terms of writing, in terms of literary advocacy. Let's step back a little and let's hear about you as a writer. Oh, just as a writer or the other no, kind of first advocacy? A, a, first a writer, as a writer. And then we talk about Okay, advocacy. so um, before Ake Festival, mm. I had written three books of poems um, and a novel. Um, and also some plays which were produced but not published. Mm -hmm. um, short stories. Um, I'd won a few prizes for some of my writing. Um, so I was immersed in the um, Association of Nigerian Authors. Mm -hmm. That circuit was very, very important to my development as an author. I was so inspired mm -hmm. by many of the writers of the previous generation, um, not just in Nigeria, but like Mama Ata, I do like mm -hmm. people from across West Africa and the rest of Africa. Mm -hmm. Those were the people um, that I really wanted to be like. Mm -hmm. I wanted to just drink them up like a sponge mm -hmm. um, because everything that they did was just such an inspiration to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then we come to advocacy i mean trying to bring out voices maybe organization i can talk a little bit about what we have tried to do um and we about ways of amplifying the voice of writers and that was just what we had in mind it's snowballed into different things how has it been for you in terms of your work in advocating literature in nigeria and beyond so I started quite early. Um, I founded a publishing house when I was 23, oh, which wow. is 24 <laughs> years ago, um, called Oval Onion House. Mm -hmm. It was like um, the shape of an onion, but oval, because to my <laughs> eyes, <laughs> then it looked like a uterus. <laughs> so, and I had seen the women's press, and mm -hmm. their logo was an iron. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, I need to do something, you mm. know, where we can publish women writers. Mm. So I think that's where it all started. And everywhere that I have gone from um, when I was living in Ibadan, um, I founded the Ibadan Arts Renaissance. Mm -hmm. When I was living in Abuja, I started um, this monthly event called Infusion, where we would invite writers and artists and filmmakers to showcase their work and speak. So, but all that time, and this is one thing a lot of people don't know about me, I was mm -hmm. a school teacher. Okay. So I've actually worked in education yeah. for a long time, and mm -hmm. I rose to um, the position of deputy principal. Okay. I just didn't want to go the full hog. I thought uh, it was too demanding. <laughs> and I, I, I was I, I, in no way prepared to be that responsible um, mm. for so many people at that level. Mm. So I um, have always enjoyed reading um, to children. Mm. If there's anything that I have loved in my entire career as an educator, it's been the times when I've been able to introduce books, books to my students. Right. And I would use all sorts of crazy tricks. 
so they wouldn't read. So when they're coming into my class, for instance, I'll just have a book open and I'll be going. <laughs> <laughs> character is crazy <laughs> you know so they're walking in yeah. and they're all like what are you mm. miss what are you reading you know and this is in england in nigeria mm. and i would say man it's this book oh, you need to, you guys need to read it and that book would they, i mean if people when people would go to the library to find that book it mm. just wouldn't be there for the rest of the term because different people were picking it up mm. so i mentioned earlier of course being a deputy principal i was right. deputy principal pastoral so a lot of my work has been um the emotional um physical academic well-being mm. of of students and a big part of that for me is about um, really looking for ways of enriching their educational mm. experience. Mm. So in many ways, when you look at what goes into organizing a festival, I've had like the perfect um, rehearsals yeah. already throughout my life. Mm. I used to be the one who did the timetabling, mm. for instance, mm. in a whole school, making sure the kids don't, the classes don't clash, right. everybody's doing what they want to mm. do and what they should be doing at certain times. Mm -hmm. Of course, I bring that into planning the festival. Mm. But I guess one of the really um, important things about being um, the deputy principal pastoral was that I was very conscious about organizing engaging events mm. for the students. So I would go to the, uh, the, the um, proprietress and I would say, look, I just need a day. Give me a day in the calendar. I want to fill that day with fun for these kids. So they would do all sorts of activities. And of course, I was a, a literature teacher. I taught media studies and mm -hmm. I taught drama. Oh, I see. So I was also head of drama, <laughs> you know. So it, it's a so the idea of organizing an event that people will find engaging, but that speaks to a need that they have or an interest that they have. Um, all those skills I picked up during my years of education. Mm. And then, of course, as a writer myself, who's been to other festivals, I have a very clear idea of what it is that makes writers feel right, feel valued. Right. And I try to make sure I do all those things and put them into place. So it's a whole kind of lot of stuff. So I do... Um, uh, I run Weida Books, the mm -hmm. publishing house. Mm -hmm. I also run a bookstore in Lagos. Mm -hmm. We also have a studio where people come and record audio books and podcasts. Um, and then, of course, there's the Book Buzz Foundation, which organizes Ake Festival and the Kaduna Festival. And then there's the One Read platform, um, which we're trying to use to put books in the hands of as many people, mm. um, books written by Africans in the hands of as many Africans as possible. It's an app. So it's the way that my mind works. Yeah. It's about trying, looking at every point in the ecosystem and trying to see what I can do to um, oil the wheels and get things moving faster. But a lot of the stuff I do continues to bring together the three uh, areas that I'm really interested in, which is education and, of course, literacy mm -hmm. um, and literature in itself and co literature, culture, the arts. I was, yeah. uh, when you uh, mentioned all the things that you are doing, I was just wondering, so uh, how are you so calm? I mean, there's like so many things and you are able to handle all of them all together. But I want to look at the fact that you were a teacher and you were dealing with children and I, I, I think that probably the nurturing, nurturing young people um, must be one of the reasons why you have persisted mm -hmm. all this while and I, I also would like to um, ask maybe just as an aside because you mentioned with the books what uh, happened to Oval Union? Well, I don't know. I think I just kind of grew out of mm. that idea. Mm. I didn't... We published two books, and then 
I, I guess I didn't know enough about the industry or I just wasn't ready mm -hmm. to take on that sort of responsibility. So what I started doing was I started publishing a little journal mm -hmm. called Olongo, which I used to collect the pieces, design it myself in Microsoft Publisher, take it to the printer and sit there for the whole day so that they would run it, you know. Wow, that's, you that's know, all those, it, it's, in it's, the background, eh? well, it's, it's a journey. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. the, I, I didn't arrive at this place today or in the last 10 years. Um, and I guess those who know me and mm -hmm. those with whom I've been on this journey, and there are many of them, um, know what I have kind of the personal investment. Mm. I don't need to, to tell you, you know mm. what it is when you're mm. directing a festival, mm -hmm. how much of your own resources that you have to put into it. Mm. But why do it all? It's institution building. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what we're doing. It's for me, I just feel that if I can do everything to ensure that the next generation has it better than I did. Mm -hmm. It means they'll be more productive. It means they'll be more influential. It means that they will have more access to change our s different societies. That's, that's basically what, mm -hmm. what, um, what drives me. It's not a, so much about nurturing. Right. It's really because I feel that's what needs to be done. done. Mm -hmm. Now, it, the, the journey is, has been quite long, 23 years, and for uh, you to persist, um, the, the f idea is enough, but is there something else that has made you keep going from one thing to the other, um, even expanding? Mm. You know, many people, I'm sure, would have done a quarter of that and said, um, okay, I, I give up. Uh, is, that, is that something that has ever crossed your mind that... It's too much, I give up, let me go and rest somewhere. I mean, there are times when I have thought, um, maybe, if, I mean, times when I maybe feel mis misunderstood mm -hmm. and I think, well, maybe I need to close that chapter, you know, and focus on other things. But then when I um, sit back, go into myself and think about it again, I realize that I am also not completely fulfilled yeah. unless I am doing certain things. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's sad in a way because it's like being a long-suffering wife where you, 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 this has got to be one of the most difficult, one of the most complex industries to work mm -hmm. within, um, but it has to be done. So there is a, a, a small sense of duty. Right. And then when I mm. look across the continent and I look at you know, um, the writers from my generation, the ones coming behind us, and even the ones ahead of us, is there anything more important mm. than institution building but bringing people together to be able to talk, to see each other? It, 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 you'll be amazed the number of initiatives mm -hmm. that have grown out of conversations that people started at Ake mm -hmm. Festival. And that's what needs to happen. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I try not to think too much about the challenges mm -hmm. and I try to focus very much on, on the stories, the positive stories and whatever change one is able to bring about those are the things that will keep on propelling mm -hmm. me and you know motivating me to to keep at it mm -hmm. so okay now i think um it's very well known in literary circles across the the continent i mean you don't really even have to finish mentioning the name as soon as you say okay everybody knows what it is um can you share with us the the meaning of the name and how you came to choose Aki as the name of your literary It's festival. much more mundane <laughs> than you think it is. But I knew it was going to be in Abel Kuta. I actually mm. wanted, I was thinking, okay, maybe this festival should be, I should start it in Lagos. Mm -hmm. But at that time, my husband was the commissioner for health in Ogun State, mm. which is where Abel Kuta is. So when I said I was going to Lagos, I was going to go and try and see the governor. He was like, how can I be working somewhere <laughs> with one governor so closely as a commissioner? And you are going to go to another com governor. Isn't that embarrassing? So I was like, yeah, but 
do you have the space and I mean, can it really work? Mm. And he said, okay, follow me. And he took me to the venue and said, look at all this. It can happen. Let's do it here. You have to do it here, Lola. So I kind of caved in. Mm. Um, there was a lot of pressure. Um, and then when it came to naming it, I was going to go for Abel Kuta. Mm. Then I thought to myself, there's a particular part of of Abel Kuta that's called Ake. Mm. There's nothing that irritates me more than um, people mispronouncing names that I guess one thinks are, are pretty you know, straightforward. Mm. I still have a friend who calls Abel Kuta Ake Obuta till today. <laughs> you know, and I guess understandably. So I just mm. said, I don't want any name that different kinds of people will just be calling anyhow. <laughs> I want to keep it simple right. <laughs> and straightforward. <laughs> so I just went for Ake. And I also thought to myself that mm. um, Wale Shoenka has a book called right. Ake, My mm -hmm. Years of Childhood. Mm -hmm. So it was already quite a familiar name mm -hmm. within literary circles. Mm -hmm. And because it was the same place, it just made sense. Mm. Yeah, I think it's it's a, a good name, simple to remember. Uh, I, I'm hoping that we are getting close with Pija, <laughs> <laughs> even though I think it's a bit more difficult to pronounce. Yeah. Um, so, if you look back over the years of Ake, um, what would you say would have been some of the high points? The high points for me, um, I would say is being able to actually be in the same space as um, people like Wale Shoinka, Ngugi Watyongo, Amata, Aidu, Nuruddin, Farah, Niyo, Shundari. It's being able to actually pay homage to them in the way that I really believe that they deserve. Mm -hmm. You know, that's been very important to me. I'm one of those old fashioned people. I really believe that if you don't study what has gone on before you are very it's very likely that you're going to make mistakes mm -hmm. so i spend a lot of my time communicating with um with some of the the first generation mm -hmm. second generation writers and to be able to bring them into our fold and for them to come and speak to writers of my generation, the generation after me, um, to come with such generosity mm -hmm. every year, that's just such a big deal for me. Mm -hmm. And I really want to get it right and keep improving on it. And, and I should show off a little here. So mm -hmm. this year, mm -hmm. in August, we picked... Abdurazak Gurna mm -hmm. as the headliner oh. for Ake Festival. <laughs> so this man, I've been talking to him like every other day. Mm -hmm. We WhatsApp, we exchange emails. Um, I've sent photographers to him. Mm -hmm. It's just been incredible. And and then they announced that he had won the Nobel, <laughs> and it was like, wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, that was a. It made me wish that we could have an in-person festival mm. because that would have been a wonderful time for all of us to come together and interact with him. Yes. Um, but let's let's hope um, something can happen next year. So that's been mm. really important. The other. Um, the other really important thing for me, I guess, what's something that I have observed um, has been just the growth of the festival mm -hmm. and how it has become home for so many um, different people, writers, publishers, readers, filmmakers. Um, it's no mean feat mm -hmm. and and it, it's, um, it's huge, and it's hugely gratifying that people trust me enough to come when I invite them mm -hmm. and to come and give of themselves mm -hmm. at that sort of forum. Yeah. So that, for me, I appreciate. Uh, I never take it for granted mm -hmm. when people respond positively to the invitations and then come and be with us. It's, it's a really big deal for me just on a personal level. And congratulations on uh, being able to catch uh, the Nouveau Prize winner. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. Um, I, I keep hearing you, you placing the writer at the focus of Ake. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's something that um, I'm learning from. I think it's a really important uh, 
uh, thing that you are saying and also you are saying it with such humility and I find that um, having dealt with all these, I mean the big writers across the continent, you still say that it's gratifying when they say yes. I mean another writer would think that um, uh, maybe she, uh, you know, like uh, if I ask them, they must, you know, because I am a key, you know, I've grown oh, no, so no, big, no, no, you know, no. but yeah. No, it's, uh. it's, look, they are so big in my eyes, mm -hmm. <laughs> that generation, mm -hmm. you know, it's to be able to even be in a position to honor them mm -hmm. is a big deal for me. Mm -hmm. You know, just on a personal level that I can't even share with mm. anybody else. Just the little feeling that I get when they're on stage at Ake Festival, you know, is, is a big deal mm. for, for me. To be able to do that mm. and to be able to honor them and that they make themselves available. Mm. Um, because it's so important. Mm. If the whole world is forgetting what the generations before and they're not respecting what the generations before have done and how they have paved the way and opened doors for those coming after them. If people in all other works of life forget, we cannot forget mm. it within the literary world. We can't because it's about canons. It's about, you know, it's a continuum. It's, mm. it's about new blood. It's the old blood never goes away. Mm. It's always there. They're immortalized, you know, in their writing. Um, so, yeah, to be able to, to speak to them, to be able to communicate with them is it's so deeply humbling for me. Yeah. You know, it's, 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 it's the stuff of dreams, the stuff that dreams are made of. Mm. Oh, that's... that's uh something to aspire for i think <laughs> now um we've looked at some of the high points i know that uh, 2020 sprang a very nasty surprise on everybody mm. with the COVID uh, uh situation and how did you how did it hit you you know um all of a sudden no travel mm. um lockdown and you are planning for a festival. How did they hit you and how did you respond? Really great question. But the truth is, when you're a teacher, you become an expert mm. in adapting to different situations. Mm. Because what you plan is not what always <laughs> happens. You get used to that. Mm. So once the plan, once, once things derail, you quickly adapt. Mm -hmm. And the idea is you have to do it in such a way that the students don't even know that things have gone awry. Mm. You know, you've got to kind of make them feel that it was part of the plan <laughs> anyway. Um, so I, as soon as I knew things were going in a certain direction, I announced that it was going to be online, mm -hmm. I think, in April. Right. I could already see where things were going, mm -hmm. and I just decided... I don't even want to think about having to invite people. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do it. Let's start working towards how to make it a successful online mm -hmm. festival. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that was always at the back of my mind was, how can we make the, bring this experience to people in a way that, that most closely resembles the real mm -hmm. thing? Mm -hmm. So I thought of the different elements of Ake. We normally have a play. Mm -hmm. So I had been to an, a festival in South Africa the year before where I had watched the incredible Lebo Mashile in this two-person uh, play. Mm -hmm. And I decided, right, I'm going to contact her and find out how much it is for her to act on stage, but to be filmed mm. so we can have close-ups and, you know, and all that. And so that it feels, people feel like they're in a theater mm. when they are watching it. So that's what I try to do with every single area, with the poetry, um, we had um, 10 different poets from across the, the continent. And what we did is we sent them, obviously, a, a fee for, you know, performing their poems. But we sent them, everybody, $250 to also make a film mm. of themselves mm. 
performing their poems and i told them make it exciting find a do it in a venue that you think captures the essence of the work that you do mm. so some people did it in a kitchen some people did it in on top of a mountain <laughs> some people it was really varied and they all sent in their work and then we had to kind of top and tail it mm. but also introduce each poets in between and we did the same with musicians mm -hmm. um, we had 10 musicians i think as well if not 12. Mm -hmm. so it was just the question of making the experience real making it memorable mm -hmm. for the people who joined us on online mm -hmm. but i was um I was just clear in my mind that it had, I think we were the first to announce that we were going virtual. Mm. Um, and, and I'd just already seen that. And I thought, let's just, mm. let's not even bother. Let's just adapt and make yeah. the most of it. So I was speaking to uh, someone who I think is at Georgetown Literary Festival also, and they were actually expressing regret that in their response to COVID, had been to cancel the festival for mm. the year, you know? Mm. And what the, the director had said was that, looking back, they should just have done something. I mean, mm. they should just have done something, just mm. to keep the festival running and not, yeah. And now we are in our second year of uh, COVID. The restrictions are diminishing, but it does appear that we've learned a lot of um, lessons going forward. Um, are there any new, uh, things you are introducing for Ake this this year? Um, in in lots of ways. So this year, um, I'm, I'll, I've been more interested in collaborations. Mm -hmm. So rather than having poets perform and send in their work, for instance, what I did was I got one poet and to record her voice, herself reading four different poems and then i we sent those voice recordings to four different filmmakers to create films that would accompany each of those poems mm. so that's the way that my mind works mm. you know i i love the idea of of different art forms kind of working together in ways that uh, are a somewhat kind of unpredictable mm -hmm. um, so what we're going to have for instance when you open the website with poetry you'll see an album and then you can click on each one and when you click on each track mm -hmm. it takes you to the film mm -hmm. and you still get to enjoy the poem so you've got the poem and then you've got so it's a wonderful effort mm -hmm. between two people working in two, in two completely different areas mm -hmm. so i do a lot of that mm -hmm. um just in my um kind of mad curation mm -hmm. <laughs> i i am always thinking okay how can we mix things up and the idea is a selfish one <laughs> it's really trying to capture as many <laughs> different people <laughs> as possible. So if you don't come for the books, come for the films. <laughs> if you don't come for the play, come for the concert. Yeah. If you don't come for, yeah. So that's the idea, mm -hmm. to bring them together and then force books on them. <laughs> 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 so that's a, um, a big part <laughs> of, of the work that mm. that we try to do because the festival is also there to sell books yeah. we want people to buy books we bring we lower up our prices um so that we make very little money but the idea is volume so that people can afford them so that we can see those books going in people's bags into people's bags and away to their homes mm -hmm. i mean ultimately also that's the idea to spread literature to make sure that people are reading and accessing african voices yeah so in uh, in in a minute sorry in uh, can, I, uh, can i just say one quick thing quickly um that that it's really interesting when people cancel it never really occurs to me to cancel mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. like a festival mm -hmm. and that's because 
The festival in, in itself is a revolutionary act, mm. especially when you're coming together to talk about, have difficult and uncomfortable conversations. Mm -hmm. It's important that it goes on, and we, you have to work hard not to, to, you know, um, to, to ensure that the work continues. And I learned that from, from Wale Shuinka. Mm. When we had that tragedy at um, Story Moja Hay Festival mm -hmm. in, in Nairobi, yeah. and we lost yes, uh, Professor, yes, Awuno. Mm -hmm. Professor Awuno, um, and then they canceled the festival from then. Mm. So when I was talking to Professor Shoinka about it, he, it, it was if about four months after, and they'd started things back up. So they were trying to invite him to come for the next one. And he said he was definitely going to go, particularly because of what had happened the year before. Mm -hmm. And then he said to me, and listen, you don't cancel art. Art must continue, no matter what. And what he was saying was that even after that tragedy, the festival should have gone on, okay. which is not always a popular opinion. Mm -hmm. But when I thought about it, um, what better way to honor honor someone's yes. memory, somebody who was part of you, you know? You go on. Mm -hmm. That's probably what any writer mm -hmm. would want. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, well taken about the uh, cancellations. I, at this point in time, I'd like also to um, invite questions from the audience. And the conversation is not over yet, but we would like to bring in um, anyone who has any comments or questions. Um, Lola, Lola Shonayin is uh, telling us about Ake, giving us the story of Ake and all the things that have gone into forming this most wonderful Liter literary festival and okay so the sound keeps going back and forth okay yes so you can uh, send in your questions i do know that this uh, session has also been um, streamed live on online ig and youtube and also should be available on zoom so we can pick questions from uh, social media as well and share them with our guests so when we begin to look forward into the future um, having heard what you said, Ake is going to live on, but do you have any idea of what kind of trajectory it's going to take, uh, what kind of form, how would you like Ake to evolve into the future? Wonderful question. I can tell you about next year. Mm -hmm. So next year is our 10th anniversary, mm -hmm. and I have been having this um, I keep thinking of Festac 77 mm -hmm. and how since that time Africans, black people haven't come together again um, since mm. to have that sort of kind of huge and meaningful um, um, convergence. So I'm looking at um, organizing something like that for AK-22, mm. um, but something for writers. So writers, poets, um, you know, filmmakers, dancers, artists. How can we, again, come all come together in a massive celebration of our, our what we call the arts mm -hmm. and our idea and understanding of culture? Mm. So, yeah. Okay. Um, you, no, I th right. So that was a little technical thing, but I think we are fine. Yes. So um, you you uh, took us all the way back to uh, first act seventy seven. Um, obviously, I wasn't there for that or anything. I was too young. But Neither was I. I was yeah. born. I was alive, but mm. I, I I didn't attend. I've only seen the films and yeah. and. Read about it yeah. and seeing the photographs and it's so moving for mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. because with Ake we are not just we we do the I, Africans and uh, it, and Africa is very central you know to what we do mm -hmm. but I'm also interested in the global diaspora mm -hmm. so the Caribbean you know the Americas everywhere where you can find black people mm -hmm. Um, is, is, is of great interest to me. That's why last year we mm -hmm. had Maris Conde 
as the headliner. Okay. So we went outside Africa in a way for the first time. I see. Um, the okay, so he actually wanted to swap the mic. <laughs> okay, so when you think about the gap between something as big as First Act 77, I've only read about it just like you, and all the way, I mean, this is almost like uh, 50 years down the line. In the intervening gap, do you think that we were missing out on this kind of um, cultural integration? I mean, the, the kind of um, activities that would try to bring entire countries together via culture and also the diaspora. Have we, do, do, do you see any other event that would have matched First Act 77? Not anything on that scale. Mm. And it's, we come together like that every four years. I mean, the entire globe for the Olympics. Mm -hmm. um, in, even in Africa, we have our African Games. So in so many different areas, people come together in that way. Um, but not for culture, not for arts, and certainly not for books. So what we've had are those small pockets of those wonderful celebrations like Peja, like Calabash in Jamaica, like um, the Botswana, the book Gaborone Book Festival. It's like, you know, little pockets everywhere. But what we need is to make enough noise that the entire world, you know, pays attention to our writers and to our creative output. So the question that has to be asked has to do with money. Hmm. These things are <laughs> uh, no. have been uh, actually uh, persistent. So I want to find out from you what are the kind of strategies that you have in order to interest sponsorship. He, he's asking me the, the important money question. <laughs> um, so, I have been extremely lucky, much luckier than most. I mean, by massive gaps. And that's because um, I started off Ten, um, nine years ago, with the first edition of Ake Festival, I got a big grant of $250,000 mm. from the World Bank, and that's how we started. The year after that, I couldn't get the same grant. I suddenly found my budget shrink. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, people, organizations, companies, they make all sorts of promises, and then they fail, or things fall through, and then you suddenly find yourself in debt. That has happened to me so often. Mm. I smile, I <laughs> talk lovingly about, about <laughs> Ake Festival, but I know I'm never going to get back what I've put into mm -hmm. Ake Festival financially. Mm -hmm. Where am I going to start accounting? Is yeah. it when we owe uh, about 20, a hotel $20,000 because more people than we expected suddenly arrived mm -hmm. and we had to accommodate them and I didn't have the budget and I spent the next six months paying for it, you know, every month. Is it that kind of um, story that I'm going to tell? So the great thing that happened to me mm -hmm. is that five years ago, I came across um, the MD and ED of Sterling Bank right. in Nigeria. And they just bought into the vision. They're both readers, do a bit of writing on the site. They just understood it and said to me, we want to support this for the next few years mm -hmm. because we see the value of it. Part of their, er one of their areas of focus is education. So they just think this is just a, a kind of out of the box route to achieving some of their own goals. Um, and They've been there for me ever since. So they're always, they are always there as the partner. So what I then do is I, of course, work with the Goethe Institute in, in Lagos, the French Institute. Um, but the great thing is being in that place where people want to work with you. 
And that's what I really appreciate. People come to me and say, how can we support AK Festival this year? And I, I'm spoilt a little bit in that way. This has all happened maybe in the last two, three years. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got my big partner, and then I've got the other people mm -hmm. who see value in being associated mm -hmm. with the festival. And that's, that's another reason why you can't just stop. stop. Yeah. You know, it's about building a brand mm -hmm. that people want to associate with. And it's important to me because I'm Nigerian. I live in Nigeria and a country where you see so much that just frustrates you, where um, the people in in you know, governments don't seem to to be to be able to have real direction in order to execute policies and you know even contracts in a way that that has real life impact on people. I was saying today, just as I was um, I was I had to come through Muritala um, Mohammed Airport mm -hmm. this morning, and my tweet was just that Muritala Mohammed is still trash. <laughs> you know, um, and every time I land here in um, Kotoka with mm -hmm. Nigerians, we are always like, "What is wrong with us that we, we can look at, look at this, this this small country, mm -hmm. small Ghana? Look, look at their airport." You know, we have those conversations a lot. But as a as just as an individual, partly this is about me being a teacher, mm -hmm. but just this culture of excellence. Mm -hmm that I really, really believe in. Mm -hmm. And since so many young people, they don't have a lot to look at mm -hmm. and say, if this person can do it this well, so can I. So I kind of devoted myself to doing that as well. I, I was going to just set up this festival and I was going to put my entire brain behind it. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And make sure that nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing can go wrong. Mm. And I'm prepared for everything. And I'm thinking about every single little detail so that the people who come can look at that festival and say, wow, mm. I didn't know this was possible. Mm. And even more so because I'm a woman, mm -hmm. you know? And that's what I want. I want young women to be able to, to come to Ake and say, you know what, I'm going to go and set one up in my backyard mm. because I can. If yeah. that Lola Shonei person can do it, how is she special? She doesn't have two heads. I can do it too, yeah. you know? Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what's happened. Mm. When we started Kaba Fest in northern Nigeria mm -hmm. uh, five years ago, we didn't know what it was going to become. And that's a totally different model because that's a government-funded festival. Okay. But today, there are seven literary festivals in northern Nigeria. Wow. And, you know, it, and the reason I know they were inspired by, by Kaduna is that Kaduna Festival is called Kaduna Book and Arts Festival. Mm -hmm. Ake is Ake Art and Book Festival. Every festival in northern Nigeria <laughs> follows that book and arts festival. And I just think it's, it's, it's incredible, yeah, you they, know? They have to follow the winning formula, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So you've got to be, you create, I'm a big believer in if you build it, they will come. Mm. But build something of high quality, mm -hmm. a brand that people can trust. Mm -hmm. And that's been the that that's how I've seen it. Mm. So it's still hard work, yeah. you know. For this big project, it's going to be a lot of talking to people. But the way that I've been working over the years, it means that I am also now at that place where I can call in favors. I can ask to be introduced. Um, because I'm nearly 50, I'm also not going in feeling, oh, please, can you help to sponsor this <laughs> festival? No, I'm, I'm going in with confidence, you know, because, and, I, and we have a track record. Right. So that's, that's it. Mm -hmm. So I'm prepared for the challenge. I'm very excited about it. And I hope that you will be with us. Yes, for sure. I mean, I, just talking to you, one of the key things I have learned is, it's not easy, but you can work at it. Oh. And yes, and I, I think that um, across board, sometimes you look at someone who has really um, 
built something of worth and you think um they just did it it just happened you know i mean oh. yeah but this conversation has shown i mean work over so many decades and this actually is is the result um i once again will invite uh, questions if there are any any questions or comments um before i okay so let's take one from uh, the audience there good afternoon Thank you for such an inspiring um, interview. It's just been amazing to listen to you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Um, and you've given so much food for thought, so much inspiration. Um, I love um, the secret lives of Baba Zegi's wives. Uh, that, is my, that was my first meeting with you. You know, that was when I fell in love with you, in a sense. Oh, and um, and I, I would like to know, I mean, it's fabulous writing. Um, what inspired this story? Because those of us that are Nigerian, we really, we really get a lot of the stuff. And we're like, yes, you know. But what inspired the story? What inspired Baba Segi? It's, it's really quite simple. Um, my, my brother had this girlfriend called Anne, who was a medical student. I was 14 years old. I was, I'd been reading uh, A Lion and a Jewel by The Lion and the Jewel by Shoinka. Yeah. I was in Form 4, and I was mad as hell about the way that women were being treated in that book. And I was just so angry, you know. I, I, I was worried that, is this, is this the future? Is this what it looks like? Are we all just pretending we're educated? And deep down, we're all going to be plucking our husband's <laughs> armpit hairs, you know? So I was thinking of, you know, about all that. And then she comes to our house. She's doing her house job at the university, um, at UCH, Ibadan. So she would come to our house, and I think she had kind of come to understand that I just like gory stories. So she would often come and say, oh my God, let me tell you about this operation we did. When we sliced the liver like this, the blood just did, you know. And I used to get so excited, like, man, tell me more, you know. So this time she said, it was O and Jew. Lola, I have to tell you what happened. This man came to, and then she said, wait, 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 no, no. I can't start that story there. Let me tell you what happened when he came two weeks ago. So he, she now went back and told the story of the first visit, Baba Segi's first visit with his newest wife. It was an Igbo man. He was a spare parts dealer. I had to change the ethnicity of the characters. And then she said, oh, and then, of course, that last meeting, with the Yasegi, you know what happened. I'm not going to say it. Um, she then um, she she then told me about that as well, and I sat and I thought, I damn well love this story. This is just the kind of revenge I'm looking for for men. This is this. I must write my own play, <laughs> and it's going to be this story. These women dealt with that guy, you know, and. Um, when I had written two novels, couldn't find a publisher. And I was kind of thinking, I was teaching at the time, I was in the UK, and I was thinking, mm, maybe this writing life is not for me, <laughs> you know. I always just looked at it as a challenge anyway. It wasn't that I wanted a career um, as a writer. I already had a career mm -hmm. as a teacher. So my agent called me, and I said, look, um, I don't know. Uh, I don't even, I, I don't care anymore. Um, if we can't sell harlots, then that's it. Maybe I'm just going to try something else. And then she said, wait, don't you have another story? And I said, well, I do have a story, but I didn't think I was going to write it as a novel. I wanted to write it as a play mm -hmm. that blatantly, you know, attacks and criticizes that Wally Shrinka play that, <laughs> that I'm still so angry about. And, and, um, and she said, tell me the, the plot, What's, what is, tell me the story, and I did. And, and she said, that's your next novel. Mm. So it was now a question of the actual writing, <laughs> which took time. <laughs> but um, it was creating those characters, it was making sure that each of the wives was an embodiment of, um, of an issue that mattered to me, which is why it's quite broad in the themes that it covers from um, um, homosexuality to depression to, to kind of autism and then religion, which is also just such a big deal in Nigeria and Christian 
fundamentalism is sometimes as psychologically damaging as as Muslim fundamentalism, and we, it's not a conversation that people like to have, but not an area that I am afraid of because I have lived it. Mm. I have been there, and it's very much my story. So that's it. I hope I answered your question. Yeah, absolutely, you did. Thank, Thank you. you. And, and, and may I add that uh, tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon at uh, 2 p.m., to be exact, Lola is going to be in conversation with Kina Likimani, and that conversation will be more about her writing. Is it not four? Um, is it two? Think. It's two. Okay. 2 p.m. There's another question, please. Okay. Yeah, good afternoon, and um, I would like to say thank you for your good work you are doing, and then all I will say is, uh, is mine is not a question, it's a comment. And then the comments goes on there. Because of you mentioned First Tax 77, it kind of triggered me. I said, oh, wow, because I was there. And then um, I was in Nigeria at that time. I mean, Nigerian as well. Oh, wow. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I was 13. So, uh, yeah, that time. And then it was very, very exciting. You know, as Nigerian, how, how we celebrate we, we have the culture just to celebrate anything that is given to us. So I would like to say that um, what you're about to do, the Aki Festival book and the Hearts Festival for next year, is a very good idea. So I pray that you'll be able to actually establish it and do it. Because I remember back home then, when I was, when uh, first, uh, first Tax 77 was going on, you know, we were even taught songs. Huh. I, I hope you know about that. You said you weren't, uh, you were taught songs. We go to school, kind of don't even want to be in, in classroom because uh, only few homes have television. And so students kind of sneak from school and they go to their next door neighbors to go and watch First, first, um, first Act 77. We were taught a lot of things at that time. So it was really, really excited. And then just imagine now, um, technology is so powerful now and so good. So I'm sure if you do what you're saying you're going to do, it will be very, very nice. So that's Thank my you. comments and uh, more grease to your elbow. Thank you so very much. I appreciate that. You are welcome. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. And actually, this is something that we will keep our eyes on. We are looking forward to that. Um, anything that would bring the continent closer together um, will be something that um, we, we have to be a part of as much as we can. My final question actually has to do with the fact that a festival like yours is a very powerful platform. Things that are said during the panels are uh, things that are worth paying attention to. And I am sure you are aware of this. And I'm asking, how do you select the topics for the panels? <laughs> because when it is said at the panel at Ake, it is something worth noting. <laughs> Thank you so much for saying that. It's, um, and I'm glad that it's other people who do the saying and the talking, and mm -hmm. it's not really, um, it's not me. Mm -hmm. And I'm very, um, I'm a bit of a, uh, I can be quite voyeuristic when it comes to listening to conversations. I have this way of being able to engage with a conversation, but without my emotions. Mm -hmm. You know, so I listen and I see conversations taking place on social media in real life. I mean, I can be sitting listening to a conversation with Kina and you know my friend Zukizwa, and it's it that's where the seed is planted. Mm -hmm. So I'm a real opportunist in that respect. I'm constantly just listening and looking and observing, and. I do make an effort to talk about those things that we find difficult mm -hmm. to talk about. Mm -hmm. And the reason is simple. The easiest way to, to get people to open up about issues mm -hmm. at times is through a book, okay. you know? Mm -hmm. So you can have something that's really burning 
excuse me, and what you do is um, you, you make sure there's a character that kind of, you're living vicariously through Absolutely. one of the characters in your book. Mm -hmm. So when it comes, when the time comes for you to talk about that book, it really gives people an opportunity mm -hmm. to talk about those specific issues. Mm -hmm. And of course, nobody's <laughs> an island. And every time you think you've had a fantastic idea, you can be pretty sure that four other people are having it at mm -hmm. that very <laughs> moment as well. So very often with African literature or literature um, authored by black people, you will find that people are pursuing the similar themes. Mm. So that's just another way of, um, of, of preparing the ground to have some of these conversations that we shy away mm. from, that we are ashamed of, that uh, we are worried uh, our partners will hear about if we, you know, they'll be upset if we talk about mm. them. Ake is the perfect place for it mm. because we can hide behind books, mm. you know, mm. and have those conversations. But that's just one way in terms of the topics themselves. I, um, a lot of the time, like I said, it's from social media. It might be an in just, there's one that happened, um, there was one about three years ago, even Kina doesn't know. It was a conversation she was having with somebody about West Africa and um, West African writing and um, how it was different in the way the writing was, um, was received than in other parts of the country. And I thought, that is a really interesting idea. I'd like to see what the people doing the writing actually feel about that. So that's where those ideas come from. I also you know, look for controversy. Um, again, there's no better place to, <laughs> to look to talk about the issues that get people really riled up mm -hmm. than at a book festival. Mm -hmm. Because just the fact that people are readers, the kind of people who attend those festivals, you can pretty much guarantee that they're going to be more open-minded mm -hmm. than most people, mm -hmm. just by virtue of being readers. Mm -hmm. You know, it means that they're, they're open to learning something different or, you know, listening to somebody who has a completely different opinion. And I like that. And I think it's important that we can have those sorts of conversations. It doesn't and shouldn't um, degenerate into into abuse or into just indecent and crazy behavior. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to disagree mm -hmm. and be okay with that. Right. I don't go into Ake expecting everybody to agree with mm -hmm. what I feel about anything. Mm -hmm. I want to actually learn. Mm -hmm. I want to hear what people have to say. Oh, fantastic. And this is the way we have to bring the conversation to an end, unfortunately. It's, it's been a lot of uh, education, as I say, talking to you, uh, Lola. And Thank you, I Martin. I wish you all the best for this year's Aki. But I would like to encourage every one of us, um, if uh, we can in any way um, support the next um, 2022 edition and what Lola is trying to do, um, let's let's at the at the very least let's talk about it because it will be something worth following and attending and um, I I the, hope I'll yes the theme <laughs> is homecoming <laughs> homecoming okay yes okay so we keep that in mind Ake uh, is happening a little later this month and then also for the 2022 edition many thanks to you for staying with us and. Enjoy all the other sessions. There's something coming up right after we leave this stage. And so enjoy the rest of Pija. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you so much, Martin. Thank you.